Hi, I'm David Yaz with the Boston Podcast Network. I'm here today with attorneys Russell Schwartz and Nick Plant of Worcester's leading family law firm, Schwartz & Plant. Well, today the topic on the table is property division. So, Attorney Plant, let's start with you. Needless to say, this is important. We all have these stories we've heard about divorces where there's a lot of battling over dividing the property. Tell us about the concept in general. Well, it's a broad concept, and it essentially means in the, in the family law context uh, two things. It means first determining what is and what is not marital property. So what, are, what is property that is going to be divided? What is property that's part of the marriage uh, and that is subject to the court's division? That'd be step one. And step two then would be the division of that property. And it's not just plates and vases like you might see from a movie. Mm. It's real estate, it's retirement accounts, it's bank accounts, it's automobiles, um, it's everything. And it, it ranges in uh, variety, diversity, value. Uh, mm. We get big estates, we get small estates, but it really is one of the most important pieces that a divorce lawyer does, is to undertake a determination of what the property is and then to achieve the most uh, advantageous division of that property for our client. Russ, what else do you tell your clients when it comes to property division and what they need to know in terms of your making the case for them? Well, Massachusetts is what's called an equitable property division state. Equitable, fair, fairly divided property. It doesn't necessarily mean equal, but it means fair. Although the probate courts start with a general concept that uh, assets should be divided equally initially, there are about 17 factors or so that we look at uh, and that the courts look at to determine how assets are going to be fairly divided. Uh, I'll give you a couple of those. The length of the marriage, the income of the parties, the needs of the parties, contribution of the parties. Believe it or not, conduct of the parties is even one of them. Maybe less significant than we would think, but that is one of them. So there are about 17 or so that we look at. Some, are, uh, some judges look at uh, some of these factors uh, a little bit more heavily than others. But as a result, once we have our trial or once we meet with our clients and we go through all of these factors either directly with them at our initial consultation or kind of remotely when Nick and I talk about each one of our cases, we then determine what the likelihood or the range of reason as we call it uh, of uh, success based on a 50-50 division or perhaps a disparate division of the marital assets. Mm -hmm. But I, I was going to say, uh, Russell is certainly correct about Massachusetts being an equitable state. Massachusetts also has the distinction of taking a very broad look at what is marital property. So unlike other states, Massachusetts's property definition is essentially any property no matter how titled held by any person. So you start out with a very, very expansive uh, definition of property. Within that then becomes a lot of work at determining even if it is marital property, why somebody might retain a premarital asset or why they might retain an inherited asset or why it might be divided. So um, uh, certainly being an equitable stat, uh, state is correct, but also having an expansive view of property is correct in Massachusetts. And, and with that being said, there are, are a number of nuances that come along with it. Was the assets, asset or assets acquired prior to the marriage? Have they appreciated during the marriage? Are the premarital assets going to be included? Was there a prenuptial agreement? How much have the uh, post-marital assets appreciated and um, where they came from. And is there a portion of this that involves investigation? In other words, you need to know what the property truly is and whether a party, heaven forbid, might be hiding something. It certainly involves investigation occasionally. I might say that it's more accurate to say it, re it really involves individualized representation for that particular client, understanding their financial history, understanding where the assets are, getting a solid background as to where the assets came from so that we can apply those 17 factors that Russell talked about to get a judge to understand why the property should be divided the way we want it divided. And to some extent, uh, much of the information that we initially get can come from our initial consultation with our clients. Mm -hmm. When we meet with our clients, we do a detailed analysis. We spend a substantial amount of time with them, uh, taking the time that they need and taking the time that we need to give them a rough idea as to what they can anticipate in the process, in particular with division of marital assets. Well, thanks. Great information from both of you. I hope I properly and fairly divided the time between you. And thanks for telling us about how this concept fits into the larger picture of family law. Thanks for listening to today's discussion. For more information on this topic and all topics surrounding family law, and to follow up with Attorney Schwartz and Plant, please visit the website at schwartzplant.com. And thanks for watching.